PCI Express, Peripheral Component Interconnect Express, officially abbreviated as PCIe or PCIe, is a high-speed serial computer expansion bus standard, designed to replace the older PCI, PCIX and AGP bus standards. PCIe has numerous improvements over the older standards, including higher maximum system bus throughput, lower I.O. pin count and smaller physical footprint, better performance scaling for bus devices, a more detailed error detection and reporting mechanism, advanced error reporting, air, and native hot swap functionality. More recent revisions of the PCIe standard provide hardware support for I.O. virtualization. Defined by its number of lanes, the PCI Express electrical interface is also used in a variety of other standards, most notably the laptop expansion card interface Express Card and computer storage interfaces SATA Express and M.2. Format specifications are maintained and developed by the PCI SIG PCI Special Interest Group, a group of more than 900 companies that also maintain the conventional PCI specifications. Topic: Architecture Conceptually, the PCI Express bus is a high-speed serial replacement of the older PCI, PCI-X bus. One of the key differences between the PCI Express bus and the older PCI is the bus topology. PCI uses a shared parallel bus architecture, in which the PCI host and all devices share a common set of address, data and control lines. In contrast, PCI Express is based on point-to-point -point topology, with separate serial links connecting every device to the root complex host. Due to its shared bus topology, access to the older PCI bus is arbitrated in the case of multiple masters, and limited to one master at a time, in a single direction. Furthermore, the older PCI clocking scheme limits the bus clock to the slowest peripheral on the bus regardless of the devices involved in the bus transaction. In contrast, a PCI Express bus link supports full duplex communication between any two endpoints, with no inherent limitation on concurrent access across multiple endpoints. In terms of bus protocol, PCI Express communication is encapsulated in packets. The work of packetizing and de-packetizing data and status message traffic is handled by the transaction layer of the PCI Express port described later. Radical differences in electrical signaling and bus protocol require the use of a different mechanical form factor and expansion connectors and thus, new motherboards and new adapter boards, PCI slots and PCI Express slots are not interchangeable. At the software level, PCI Express preserves backward compatibility with PCI. Legacy PCI system software can detect and configure newer PCI Express devices without explicit support for the PCI Express standard, though new PCI Express features are inaccessible. The PCI Express link between two devices can vary in size from 1 to 32 lanes. In a multi-lane link, the packet data is striped across lanes, and peak data throughput scales with the overall link width. The lane count is automatically negotiated during device initialization, and can be restricted by either endpoint. For example, a single lane PCI Express times 1 card can be inserted into a multi-lane slot times 4 times 8, etc., and the initialization cycle auto negotiates the highest mutually supported lane count. The link can dynamically down configure itself to use fewer lanes, providing a failure tolerance in case bad or unreliable lanes are present. 
The PCI Express standard defines link widths of times 1, times 4, times 8, times 12, times 16 and times 32. This allows the PCI Express bus to serve both cost-sensitive applications where high throughput is not needed, as well as performance-critical applications such as 3D graphics, networking 10 gigabit Ethernet or multiport gigabit Ethernet, and enterprise storage SAS or fiber channel. Slots and connectors are only defined for a subset of these widths, with link widths in between using the next larger physical slot size. As a point of reference, a PCI BI 133 MHz device and a PCI Express 1.0 device using four lanes times four have roughly the same peak single direction transfer rate of 1064 MB per second. The PCI Express bus has the potential to perform better than the PCI-X bus in cases where multiple devices are transferring data simultaneously, or if communication with the PCI Express peripheral is bidirectional. Interconnect PCI Express devices communicate via a logical connection called an interconnect or link. A link is a point-to-point -point communication channel between two PCI Express ports allowing both of them to send and receive ordinary PCI requests configuration, I.O. or memory read, write, and interrupts INTX, MSI or MSIX. At the physical level, a link is composed of one or more lanes. Low-speed peripherals such as an 802.11 Wi-Fi card use a single lane times one link, while a graphics adapter typically uses a much wider and faster 16 lane times 16 link. Topic: Lane A lane is composed of two differential signaling pairs, with one pair for receiving data and the other for transmitting. Thus, each lane is composed of four wires or signal traces. Conceptually, each lane is used as a full duplex byte stream, transporting data packets in 8-bit byte. Format simultaneously in both directions between endpoints of a link. Physical PCI Express links may contain from 1 to 32 lanes, more precisely 1, 2, 4, 8, 12, 16 or 32 lanes. Lane counts are written with an times prefix, for example, times 8 represents an 8-lane card or slot, with times 16 being the largest size in common use. Lane sizes are also referred to via the terms width or by, e.g., an 8-lane slot could be referred to as a by 8 or as 8 lanes wide. For mechanical card sizes, see below. Topic: <laughs> Serial bus The bonded serial bus architecture was chosen over the traditional parallel bus due to inherent limitations of the latter, including half-duplex operation, excess signal count, and inherently lower bandwidth due to timing skew. Timing skew results from separate electrical signals within a parallel interface traveling through conductors of different lengths, on potentially different printed circuit board PCB layers, and at possibly different signal velocities. Despite being transmitted simultaneously as a single word, signals on a parallel interface have different travel duration and arrive at their destinations at different times. When the interface clock period is shorter than the largest time difference between signal arrivals, recovery of the transmitted word is no longer possible. 
Since timing skew over a parallel bus can amount to a few nanoseconds, the resulting bandwidth limitation is in the range of hundreds of megahertz. A serial interface does not exhibit timing skew because there is only one differential signal in each direction within each lane, and there is no external clock signal since clocking information is embedded within the serial signal itself. As such, typical bandwidth limitations on serial signals are in the multi-gigahertz range. PCI Express is one example of the general trend toward replacing parallel buses with serial interconnects. Other examples include Serial ATA (SATA), USB, Serial Attached SCSI (SAS), Firewire (IEEE 1394), and Rapidio. In digital video, examples in common use are DVI, HDMI and DisplayPort. Multi-channel serial design increases flexibility with its ability to allocate fewer lanes for slower devices. Topic: <laughs> Form factors. Topic: <laughs> PCI Express standard. A PCI Express card fits into a slot of its physical size or larger with times 16 as the largest used, but may not fit into a smaller PCI Express slot, for example, a times 16 card may not fit into a times 4 or times 8 slot. Some slots use open-ended sockets to permit physically longer cards and negotiate the best available electrical and logical connection. The number of lanes actually connected to a slot may also be fewer than the number supported by the physical slot size. An example is a times 16 slot that runs at times 4, which will accept any times 1, times 2, times 4, times 8 or times 16 card, but provides only 4 lanes. Its specification may read as times 16 times 4 mode while times size at times speed notation times 16 at times 4 is also common the advantage is that such slots can accommodate a larger range of PCI express cards without requiring motherboard hardware to support the full transfer rate standard mechanical sizes are times 1 times 4 times 8 and times 16 Cards with a differing number of lanes need to use the next larger mechanical size i.e. a times 2 card uses the times 4 size, or a times 12 card uses the times 16 size. The cards themselves are designed and manufactured in various sizes. For example, solid state drives SSDs that come in the form of PCI Express cards often use HHHL half height, half length and FHHL full height, half length to describe the physical dimensions of the card. Topic: <laughs> Pinout The following table identifies the conductors on each side of the edge connector on a PCI Express card. The solder side of the printed circuit board PCB is the A side, and the component side is the B side. PRSNT1 hash and PRSNT2 hash pins must be slightly shorter than the rest, to ensure that a hot plugged card is fully inserted. The wake hash pin uses full voltage to wake the computer, but must be pulled high from the standby power to indicate that the card is wake capable. <laughs> power All PCI Express cards may consume up to 3A at plus 3.3 volts 9 .9 the amount of plus 1 2 V and total power they may consume depends on the type of card. 
Times 1 cards are limited to 0.5A at plus 1 2 V 6 W and 10 W combined. Times 4 and wider cards are limited to 2.1A at plus 1 2 V 25 W and 25 W combined. A full-sized times 1 card may draw up to the 25W limits after initialization and software configuration as a high power device. A full-sized times 16 graphics card may draw up to 5.5A at plus 12V 66W and 75W combined after initialization and software configuration as a high power device optional connectors add 75w 6 pin or 150w 8 pin of plus 1 2 v power for up to 300w total 2 times 75w plus 1 times 150w since zero pin is connected to ground by the cable or power supply or float on board if cable is not connected since one pin is connected to ground by the cable or power supply, or float on board if cable is not connected, there are cards that use two 8-pin connectors, but this has not been standardized yet as of 2018, therefore such cards must not carry the official PCI Express logo. This configuration allows 375W total, 1 times 75W plus 2 times 150W, and will likely be standardized by PCI SIG with the PCI Express 4.0 standard. The 8-pin PCI Express connector could be confused with the EPS-12V connector, which is mainly used for powering SMP and multi-core systems. Topic. PCI Express Mini Card PCI Express Mini Card also known as Mini PCI Express, Mini PCIe, Mini PCIe, MPCIe, and PEM, based on PCI Express, is a replacement for the Mini PCI form factor. It is developed by the PCI SIG. The host device supports both PCI Express and USB 2.0 connectivity, and each card may use either standard. Most laptop computers built after 2005 use PCI Express for expansion cards, however, as of 2015, many vendors are moving toward using the newer M.2 form factor for this purpose. Due to different dimensions, PCI Express Mini cards are not physically compatible with standard full-size PCI Express slots, however, passive adapters exist that allow them to be used in full-size slots. <laughs> Physical dimensions Dimensions of PCI Express Mini cards are 30 times 50.95 mm width times length for a full mini card. There is a 52-pin edge connector, consisting of two staggered rows on a 0.8 mm pitch. Each row has eight contacts, a gap equivalent to four contacts, then a further 18 contacts. Boards have a thickness of 1.0 mm, excluding the components. A half mini card, sometimes abbreviated as HMC, is also specified, having approximately half the physical length of 26.8 mm. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Electrical interface. PCI Express Mini Card Edge Connectors provide multiple connections and buses PCI Express Times 1 with SM bus USB 2.0 
wires to diagnostics LEDs for wireless network i.e., Wi-Fi status on computer's chassis SIM card for GSM and WCDMA applications UIM signals on spec Future extension for another PCIe lane 1.5 volts and 3 3 volts power Topic <laughs> Mini SATA MSATA variant Despite sharing the Mini PCI Express form factor, an MSATA slot is not necessarily electrically compatible with Mini PCI Express. For this reason, only certain notebooks are compatible with MSATA drives. Most compatible systems are based on Intel's Sandy Bridge processor architecture, using the Huron River platform. Notebooks such as Lenovo's ThinkPad T, W and X series, released in March to April 2011, have support for an MSATA SSD card in their WWAN card slot. The ThinkPad Edge E220s, E420s, and the Lenovo IdeaPad Y460, Y560, Y570, Y580 also support MSATA. Some notebooks, notably the Asus EPC, the Apple MacBook Air, and the Dell Mini 9 and Mini 10, use a variant of the PCI Express Mini card as an SSD. This variant uses the reserved and several non-reserved pins to implement SATA and IDE interface pass-through, keeping only USB, ground lines, and sometimes the core PCIe x1 bus intact. This makes the mini PC flash and solid-state drives sold for netbooks largely incompatible with true PCI Express Mini implementations. Also, the typical Asus MiniPC SSD is 71 mm long, causing the Dell 51 mm model to often be incorrectly referred to as half length. A true 51 mm Mini PCIe SSD was announced in 2009, with two stacked PCB layers that allow for higher storage capacity. The announced design preserves the PCIe interface, making it compatible with the standard mini PCIe slot. No working product has yet been developed. Intel has numerous desktop boards with the PCIe x1 mini card slot which typically do not support MSATA SSD. A list of desktop boards that natively support MSATA in the PCIe x1 mini card slot, typically multiplexed with a SATA port, is provided on the Intel support site. Topic PCI Express M.2 Mini PCIe V2 The new version of Mini PCI Express M.2 replaces the MSATA standard. Computer bus interfaces provided through the M.2 connector are PCI Express 3.0 up to 4 lanes, Serial ATA 3.0 and USB 3.0, a single logical port for each of the latter two. It is up to the manufacturer of the M.2 host or device to select which interfaces are to be supported depending on the desired level of host support and device type. Topic. PCI Express external cabling PCI Express external cabling also known as external PCI Express, cabled PCI Express, or EPC, specifications were released by the PCI SIG in February 2007. Standard cables and connectors have been defined for X1, X4, X8, and X16 link widths, with a transfer rate of 250 megabytes per second per lane. 
The PCI SIG also expects the norm will evolve to reach 500 megabytes per second, as in PCI Express 2.0. An example of the uses of cable PCI Express is a metal enclosure, containing a number of PCIe slots and PCIe to EPC adapter circuitry. This device would not be possible had it not been for the EPC spec. <laughs> PCI Express Oculink Oculink standing for optical copper link since CU is the chemical symbol for copper is an extension for the cable version of PCI Express acting as a competitor to version 3 of the Thunderbolt interface Version 1.0 of Oculink, released in October 2015, supports up to PCIe 3.0 times 4 lanes 8 GT, S, 3.9 GB per second over copper cabling. A fiber optic version may appear in the future. Oculink in last version will have up to 16 GT, S, 8 GB per second total for times 4 lanes, while the maximum bandwidth of a Thunderbolt 3 connector is 5 gigabytes per second topic <laughs> derivative forms Several other types of expansion card are derived from PCIe these include low height card Express card, successor to the PC card form factor, with X1 PCIe and USB 2.0, hot pluggable. PCI Express Express Module, a hot pluggable modular form factor defined for servers and workstations. XQD card, a PCI Express based flash card standard by the Compact Flash Association. XMC, similar to the CMC, PMC form factor, Vita 42.3 Advanced CHA, a complement to compact PCI for larger applications, supports serial-based backplane topologies. AMC, a complement to the Advanced CHA specification, supports processor and I.O. modules on ATCA boards times 1, times 2, times 4 or times 8, PCIe. Feature Pack, a tiny expansion card format, 43 times 65 mm, for embedded and small form factor applications which implements 2 times 1 PCIe links on a high-density connector along with USB, I2C, and up to 100 points of I.O. Universal I.O., a variant from Super Micro Computer Inc., designed for use in low-profile rack-mounted chassis. It has the connector bracket reversed so it cannot fit in a normal PCI Express socket, but it is pin-compatible and may be inserted if the bracket is removed. Thunderbolt, a variant from Intel that combines DisplayPort and PCIe protocols in a form factor compatible with Mini DisplayPort. Thunderbolt 3.0 also combines USB 3.1 and uses the USB-C form factor as opposed to Mini DisplayPort. Serial Digital Video Out – Some 9xx series Intel chipsets allow for adding another output for the integrated video into a PCIe slot, mostly dedicated and 16 lanes. M.2 – Formerly known as NGFF MPCIe brings PCIe 3.0 to mobile devices, such as tablets and smartphones, over the M5 physical layer. U2, formerly known as SFF8639. Topic: History and revisions. 
While in early development, PCIe was initially referred to as HSI for high speed interconnect and underwent a name change to 3G IO for third generation IO before finally settling on its PCI SIG name PCI Express. A technical working group named the Arapaho Work Group AWG drew up the standard. For initial drafts, the AWG consisted only of Intel engineers. Subsequently, the AWG expanded to include industry partners. Since PCIe has undergone several large and smaller revisions, improving on performance and other features. Topic: <laughs> PCI Express 1.0 In 2003, PCI SIG introduced PCIe 1.0a, with a per lane data rate of 250 MB per second and a transfer rate of 2.5 gigatransfers per second. GTS. Transfer rate is expressed in transfers per second instead of bits per second because the number of transfers includes the overhead bits, which do not provide additional throughput. PCIe 1. X uses an 8B, 10B encoding scheme, resulting in a 20%. Equals 2 tenths overhead on the raw channel bandwidth. Equals 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 PCI Express 1 1 equals 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 in 2005 PCI SIG introduced PCIe 1.1 this updated specification includes clarifications and several improvements, but is fully compatible with PCI Express 1.0a. No changes were made to the data rate. PCI Express 2.0 PCI SIG announced the availability of the PCI Express Base 2.0 specification on 15 January 2007. The PCIe 2.0 standard doubles the transfer rate compared with PCIe 1.0 to 5 GTS and the per lane throughput rises from 250 megabytes per second to 500 megabytes per second. Consequently, a 32-lane PCIe connector times 32 can support an aggregate throughput of up to 16 gigabytes per second. PCIe 2.0 motherboard slots are fully backward compatible with PCIe V1 X cards. PCIe 2.0 cards are also generally backward compatible with PCIe 1, X motherboards, using the available bandwidth of PCI Express 1.1. Overall, graphic cards or motherboards designed for V2.0 will work with the other being V1.1 or V1, 0A. The PCI SIG also said that PCIe 2.0 features improvements to the point-to-point -point data transfer protocol and its software architecture. Intel's first PCIe 2.0 capable chipset was the X38, and boards began to ship from various vendors: Abbott, Asus, Gigabyte, as of October 21, 2007. AMD started supporting PCIe 2.0 with its AMD 700 chipset series and Nvidia started with the MCP72, all of Intel's prior chipsets, including the Intel P35 chipset, supported PCIe 1.1 or 1.0a, like 1, X, PCIe 2.0 uses an 8B, 10B encoding scheme, therefore delivering, per lane, an effective 4 gigabits per second max transfer rate from its 5 GTS raw data rate. Topic: PCI Express 2.1 
PCI Express 2.1 with its specification dated March 4, 2009 supports a large proportion of the management, support, and troubleshooting systems planned for full implementation in PCI Express 3.0. However, the speed is the same as PCI Express 2.0. The increase in power from the slot breaks backward compatibility between PCI Express 2.1 cards and some older motherboards with 1.0, 1.0A, but most motherboards with PCI Express 1.1 connectors are provided with a BIOS update by the manufacturers through utilities to support backward compatibility of cards with PCIe. 2.1 Topic <laughs> PCI Express 3.0 PCI Express 3.0 Base Specification Revision 3.0 was made available in November 2010 after multiple delays. In August 2007, PCI SIG announced that PCI Express 3.0 would carry a bit rate of 8 gigatransfers per second GTS, and that it would be backward compatible with existing PCI Express implementations. At that time, it was also announced that the final specification for PCI Express 3.0 would be delayed until Q2 2010. New features for the PCI Express 3.0 specification include a number of optimizations for enhanced signaling and data integrity, including transmitter and receiver equalization, PLL improvements, clock data recovery, and channel enhancements for currently supported topologies. Following a six month technical analysis of the feasibility of scaling the PCI Express Interconnect bandwidth, PCI SIG's analysis found that 8 gigatransfers per second can be manufactured in mainstream silicon process technology, and can be deployed with existing low-cost materials and infrastructure, while maintaining full compatibility, with negligible impact, to the PCI Express protocol stack. PCI Express 3.0 upgrades the encoding scheme to 128B, 130B from the previous 8B, 10B encoding, reducing the bandwidth overhead from 20% of PCI Express 2.0 to approximately 1. 54% equals 2 one a desirable balance of 0 and 1 bit in the data stream is achieved by XORing a known binary polynomial as a scrambler to the data stream in a feedback topology. Because the scrambling polynomial is known, the data can be recovered by applying the XOR a second time. Both the scrambling and descrambling steps are carried out in hardware. PCI Express 3.0's 8GTS bit rate effectively delivers 985 megabytes per second per lane, nearly doubling the lane bandwidth relative to PCI Express 2.0.0N November 18, 2010. The PCI Special Interest Group officially published the finalized PCI Express 3.0 specification to its members to build devices based on this new version of PCI Express equals 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 PCI Express 3 1 equals 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 in September 2013, PCI Express 3.1 specification was announced to be released in late 2013 or early 2014, consolidating various improvements to the published PCI Express 3.0 specification in three areas, power management, performance and functionality. It was released in November 2014. Topic. PCI Express 4.0 equals 
On November 29, 2011, PCI SIG preliminarily announced PCI Express 4.0, providing a 16 GT, S bit rate that doubles the bandwidth provided by PCI Express 3.0, while maintaining backward and forward compatibility in both software support and used mechanical interface. PCI Express 4.0 specs will also bring OCULINK2, an alternative to Thunderbolt connector. Oculink version 2 will have up to 16 GT.S 8 GB per second total for times 4 lanes, while the maximum bandwidth of a Thunderbolt 3 connector is 5 GB per second. Additionally, active and idle power optimizations are to be investigated. In August 2016, Synopsys presented a test machine running PCIe 4.0 at the Intel Developer Forum. Their IP has been licensed to several firms planning to present their chips and products at the end of 2016. PCI Express 4.0 was officially announced on June 8, 2017, by PCI SIG. The spec includes improvements in flexibility, scalability, and lower power. NETINT Technologies introduced the first NVMe SSD based on PCIe 4.0 on July 17, 2018, ahead of Flash Memory Summit 2018 Broadcom announced on 12 September 2018 the first 200 gigabits Ethernet controller with PCIe 4.0. AMD announced on 9 January 2019 their upcoming X570 chipset will support PCIe 4.0, motherboard manufacturers will be able to update UEFIs on 300 and 400 series motherboards to enable partial PCIe 4.0 support, accessible when a Ryzen 3000 series CPU is installed. This would enable the first PCIe X16 slot to provide PCIe 4.0 connectivity, while the other CPU-driven slots would remain as PCIe 3.0. Topic: <laughs> PCI Express 5.0 In June 2017, PCI SIG preliminarily announced the PCI Express 5.0 specification. Bandwidth is expected to increase to 32 GTS, yielding 63 gigabytes per second in each direction in a 16-lane configuration. It is expected to be standardized in 2019. PLDA announced the availability of their X Pressrich 5 PCIe 5.0 controller IP based on draft 0.7 of the PCIe 5.0 specification on the same day, on 10 December 2018. The PCI SIG released version 0.9 of the PCIe 5.0 specification to its members, on 17 January 2019. The PCI PCI SIG announced the version 0.9 of the PCIe 5.0 specification has been ratified, and the version 1.0 is targeted for release in the first quarter of 2019. Topic. Extensions and future directions Some vendors offer PCIe over fiber products, but these generally find use only in specific cases where transparent PCIe bridging is preferable to using a more mainstream standard, such as InfiniBand or Ethernet, that may require additional software to support it. Current implementations focus on distance rather than raw bandwidth and typically do not implement a full-time 16 link. 
Thunderbolt was co-developed by Intel and Apple as a general-purpose high-speed interface combining a x4 PCIe link with DisplayPort and was originally intended to be an all-fiber interface, but due to early difficulties in creating a consumer-friendly fiber interconnect, nearly all implementations are copper systems. A notable exception, the Sony VIO ZVPC Z2, uses a non standard USB port with an optical component to connect to an outboard PCIe display adapter. Apple has been the primary driver of Thunderbolt adoption through 2011, though several other vendors have announced new products and systems featuring Thunderbolt. Mobile PCIe specification, abbreviated to MPCIe, allows PCI Express architecture to operate over the MIPI Alliance's M5 physical layer technology. Building on top of already existing widespread adoption of M5 and its low power design, mobile PCIe allows PCI Express to be used in tablets and smartphones. Topic. Draft process There are five primary releases, checkpoints in a PCI SIG specification. Draft 0.3 concept, this release may have few details, but outlines the general approach and goals. Draft 0.5 first draft this release has a complete set of architectural requirements and must fully address the goals set out in the 0.3 draft Draft 0.7 complete draft this release must have a complete set of functional requirements and methods defined and no new functionality may be added to the specification after this release before the release of this draft, electrical specifications must have been validated via test silicon. Draft 0.9 Final Draft – This release allows PCI SIG member companies to perform an internal review for intellectual property, and no functional changes are permitted after this draft. 1.0 Final release, this is the final and definitive specification, and any changes or enhancements will be through errata documentation and engineering change notices ECNs, respectively. Historically, the earliest adopters of a new PCIe specification generally begin designing with the draft 0.5 as they can confidently build up their application logic around the new bandwidth definition and often even start developing for any new protocol features. At the draft 0.5 stage, however, there is still a strong likelihood of changes in the actual PCIe protocol layer implementation, so designers responsible for developing these blocks internally may be more hesitant to begin work than those using interface IP from external sources. Topic. Hardware protocol summary The PCIe link is built around dedicated unidirectional couples of serial point-to-point -point connections known as lanes. This is in sharp contrast to the earlier PCI connection, which is a bus-based system where all the devices share the same bidirectional, 32-bit or 64-bit parallel bus. PCI Express is a layered protocol, consisting of a transaction layer, a data link layer, and a physical layer. The data link layer is subdivided to include a media access control Mac sublayer. The physical layer is subdivided into logical and electrical sublayers. The physical logical sublayer contains a physical coding sublayer PCS. The terms are borrowed from the IEEE 802 networking protocol model. Topic. Physical layer 
The PCIe physical layer phi, PCIe PHY, PCI Express Phi, or PCIe Phi specification is divided into two sub-layers, corresponding to electrical and logical specifications. The logical sublayer is sometimes further divided into a MAC sublayer and a PCS, although this division is not formally part of the PCIe specification. A specification published by Intel, the PHI interface for PCI Express pipe, defines the MAC – PCS functional partitioning and the interface between these two sublayers. The pipe specification also identifies the physical media attachment PMA layer, which includes the serializer, deserializer and other analog circuitry. However, since SERDES implementations vary greatly among ASIC vendors, pipe does not specify an interface between the PCS and PMA. At the electrical level, each lane consists of two unidirectional differential pairs operating at 2.5, 5, 8 or 16 gigabits per second, depending on the negotiated capabilities. Transmit and receive are separate differential pairs, for a total of four data wires per lane. A connection between any two PCIe devices is known as a link, and is built up from a collection of one or more lanes. All devices must minimally support single lane times one link. Devices may optionally support wider links composed of 2, 4, 8, 12, 16, or 32 lanes. This allows for very good compatibility in two ways. A PCIe card physically fits and works correctly in any slot that is at least as large as it is e.g., and times one sized card will work in any sized slot. A slot of a large physical size e.g., times 16 can be wired electrically with fewer lanes e.g., times 1, times 4, times 8, or times 12 as long as it provides the ground connections required by the larger physical slot size. In both cases, PCIe negotiates the highest mutually supported number of lanes. Many graphics cards, motherboards and BIOS versions are verified to support x1, times times x4, times x8 and times 16 connectivity on the same connection. Even though the two would be signal compatible, it is not usually possible to place a physically larger PCIe card e.g., a x16 sized card into a smaller slot, though if the PCIe slots are altered or a riser is used most motherboards will allow this. The width of a PCIe connector is 8.8 .8 mm, while the height is 11.25 mm, and the length is variable. The fixed section of the connector is 11.65 mm in length and contains two rows of 11 22 pins total, while the length of the other section is variable depending on the number of lanes. The pins are spaced at 1 mm intervals, and the thickness of the card going into the connector is 1.8 mm. Data transmission PCIe sends all control messages, including interrupts, over the same links used for data. The serial protocol can never be blocked, so latency is still comparable to conventional PCI, which has dedicated interrupt lines. Data transmitted on multiple lane links is interleaved, meaning that each successive byte is sent down successive lanes. The PCIe specification refers to this interleaving as data striping. While requiring significant hardware complexity to synchronize or descue the incoming stripe data, striping can significantly reduce the latency of the NTH byte on a link. 
While the lanes are not tightly synchronized, there is a limit to the lane-to-lane -lane skew of the 6 August 20 NS for 2.5, 5 eighths GT, S so the hardware buffers can realign the striped data. Due to padding requirements, striping may not necessarily reduce the latency of small data packets on a link. As with other high data rate serial transmission protocols, the clock is embedded in the signal. At the physical level, PCI Express 2.0 utilizes the 8B, 10B encoding scheme to ensure that strings of consecutive identical digits zeros or ones are limited in length. This coding was used to prevent the receiver from losing track of where the bit edges are. In this coding scheme every 8 uncoded payload bits of data are replaced with 10 encoded bits of transmit data, causing a 20% overhead in the electrical bandwidth. To improve the available bandwidth, PCI Express version 3.0 instead uses 128B, 130B encoding with scrambling. 128B, 130B encoding relies on the scrambling to limit the run length of identical digit strings in data streams and ensure the receiver stays synchronized to the transmitter. It also reduces electromagnetic interference ME by preventing repeating data patterns in the transmitted data stream. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Data link layer The data link layer performs three vital services for the PCIe Express link. Sequence the transaction layer packets TLPs that are generated by the transaction layer Ensure reliable delivery of TLPs between two endpoints via an acknowledgement protocol ACK and NAK signaling that explicitly requires replay of unacknowledged, bad TLPs Initialize and manage flow control credits in the transmit side. The data link layer generates an incrementing sequence number for each outgoing TLP. It serves as a unique identification tag for each transmitted TLP, and is inserted into the header of the outgoing TLP. A 32-bit cyclic redundancy check code known in this context as link CRC or LCRC is also appended to the end of each outgoing TLP. On the receive side, the received TLPs LCRC and sequence number are both validated in the link layer. If either the LCRC check fails indicating a data error or the sequence number is out of range non-consecutive from the last valid received TLP then the bad TLP as well as any TLPs received after the bad TLP are considered invalid and discarded. The receiver sends a negative acknowledgement message NAK with the sequence number of the invalid TLP, requesting retransmission of all TLPs forward of that sequence number. If the received TLP passes the LCRC check and has the correct sequence number, it is treated as valid. The link receiver increments the sequence number which tracks the last received good TLP, and forwards the valid TLP to the receiver's transaction layer. An ACK message is sent to remote transmitter, indicating the TLP was successfully received and by extension, all TLPs with past sequence numbers. If the transmitter receives a NAK message, or no acknowledgement NAK or ACK is received until a timeout period expires, the transmitter must retransmit all TLPs that lack a positive acknowledgement ACK, barring a persistent malfunction of the device or transmission medium. The link layer presents a reliable connection to the transaction layer, since the transmission protocol ensures delivery of TLPs over an unreliable medium. In addition to sending and receiving TLPs generated by the transaction layer, the data link layer also generates and consumes DLLPs, data link layer packets. 
Akan NAK signals are communicated via DLLPs, as are some power management messages and flow control credit information on behalf of the transaction layer. In practice, the number of in-flight, unacknowledged TLPs on the link is limited by two factors, the size of the transmitter's replay buffer which must store a copy of all transmitted TLPs until the remote receiver ACKs them, and the flow control credits issued by the receiver to a transmitter. PCI Express requires all receivers to issue a minimum number of credits, to guarantee a link allows sending PCI config TLPs and message TLPs. <laughs> Transaction layer PCI Express implements split transactions transactions with request and response separated by time, allowing the link to carry other traffic while the target device gathers data for the response. PCI Express uses credit-based flow control. In this scheme, a device advertises an initial amount of credit for each received buffer in its transaction layer. The device at the opposite end of the link, when sending transactions to this device, counts the number of credits each TLP consumes from its account. The sending device may only transmit a TLP when doing so does not make its consumed credit count exceed its credit limit. When the receiving device finishes processing the TLP from its buffer, it signals a return of credits to the sending device, which increases the credit limit by the restored amount. The credit counters are modular counters, and the comparison of consumed credits to credit limit requires modular arithmetic. The advantage of this scheme, compared to other methods such as weight states or handshake-based transfer protocols, is that the latency of credit return does not affect performance, provided that the credit limit is not encountered. This assumption is generally met if each device is designed with adequate buffer sizes. PCIe 1.x is often quoted to support a data rate of 250 megabytes per second in each direction, per lane. This figure is a calculation from the physical signaling rate 2.5 gigabo, divided by the encoding overhead 10 bits per byte. This means a 16 lane, times 16 PCIe card would then be theoretically capable of 16 times 250 megabytes per second equals 4 gigabytes per second in each direction. While this is correct in terms of data bytes, more meaningful calculations are based on the usable data payload rate, which depends on the profile of the traffic, which is a function of the high-level software, application and intermediate protocol levels. Like other high data rate serial interconnect systems, PCIe has a protocol and processing overhead due to the additional transfer robustness, CRC and acknowledgements. Long continuous unidirectional transfers, such as those typical in high performance storage controllers, can approach greater than 95% of PC's raw lane data rate. These transfers also benefit the most from increased number of lanes times 2, times 4, etc., but in more typical applications, such as a USB or Ethernet controller, the traffic profile is characterized as short data packets with frequent enforced acknowledgements. This type of traffic reduces the efficiency of the link, due to overhead from packet parsing and forced interrupts, either in the device's host interface or the PC's CPU. Being a protocol for devices connected to the same printed circuit board, it does not require the same tolerance for transmission errors as a protocol for communication over longer distances, and thus, this loss of efficiency is not particular to PCIe. Topic. Applications. 
PCI Express operates in consumer, server, and industrial applications, as a motherboard level interconnect to link motherboard mounted peripherals, a passive backplane interconnect and as an expansion card interface for add-in boards. In virtually all modern as of 2012 PCs, from consumer laptops and desktops to enterprise data servers, the PCIe bus serves as the primary motherboard level interconnect, connecting the host system processor with both integrated peripherals surface-mounted ICs and add-on peripherals expansion cards. In most of these systems, the PCIe bus co-exists with one or more legacy PCI buses, for backward compatibility with the large body of legacy PCI peripherals. As of 2013 PCI Express has replaced AGP as the default interface for graphics cards on new systems. Almost all models of graphics cards released since 2010 by AMD RT, and NVIDIA use PCI Express. NVIDIA uses the high bandwidth data transfer of PCIe for its scalable link interface SLI technology, which allows multiple graphics cards of the same chipset and model number to run in tandem, allowing increased performance. AMD has also developed a multi-GPU system based on PCIe called Crossfire. AMD, NVIDIA, and Intel have released motherboard chipsets that support as many as four PCIe x 16 slots, allowing tri-GPU and quad-GPU card configurations. Note that there are special power cables called PCIe power cables which are required for high-end graphics cards. <laughs> <laughs> External GPUs Theoretically, external PCIe could give a notebook the graphics power of a desktop, by connecting a notebook with any PCIe desktop video card enclosed in its own external housing, with a power supply and cooling, this is possible with an express card interface or a Thunderbolt interface. The express card interface provides bit rates of 5 gigabits per second, 0.5 gigabytes per second throughput, whereas the Thunderbolt interface provides bit rates of up to 40 gigabits per second, 5 gigabytes per second throughput. In 2006, NVIDIA developed the QuadroPlex external PCIe family of GPUs that can be used for advanced graphic applications for the professional market. These video cards require a PCI Express x 8 or x 16 slot for the host side card which connects to the Plex via a VHDCI carrying 8 PCIe lanes. In 2008, AMD announced the RTX GP technology, based on a proprietary cabling system that is compatible with PCIe x 8 signal transmissions. This connector is available on the Fujitsu Amilo and the Acer Ferrari One notebooks. Fujitsu launched their Amilo graphic booster enclosure for XGP soon thereafter. Around 2010, Acer launched the DynaVivid graphics dock for XGP. In 2010, external card hubs were introduced that can connect to a laptop or desktop through a PCI Express card slot. These hubs can accept full-sized graphics cards. Examples include MSI GUS, Village Instruments Vidoc, the Asus XG Station, B Plus PE 4HV 3.2 adapter, as well as more improvised DIY devices. However, such solutions are limited by the size, often only times one, and version of the available PCIe slot on a laptop. Intel Thunderbolt interface has given opportunity to new and faster products to connect with a PCIe card externally. Magma has released the Expressbox 3T, which can hold up to three PCIe cards, two at times eight and one at times four. 
MSI also released the Thunderbolt Gus II, a PCIe chassis dedicated for video cards. Other products such as the Sonnets Echo Express and Melagic's M-Link are Thunderbolt PCIe chassis in a smaller form factor. However, all these products require a computer with a Thunderbolt port i.e., Thunderbolt devices, such as Apple's MacBook Pro models released in late 2013. In 2017, more fully featured external card hubs were introduced, such as the Razer Core, which has a full-length PCIe x16 interface. Topic: <laughs> Storage devices. PCI Express protocol can be used as data interface to flash memory devices, such as memory cards and solid-state drives SSDs. XQD card is a memory card format utilizing PCI Express, developed by the Compact Flash Association, with transfer rates of up to 500 megabytes per second. Many high-performance, enterprise-class SSDs are designed as PCI Express RAID controller cards with flash memory chips placed directly on the circuit board, utilizing proprietary interfaces and custom drivers to communicate with the operating system. This allows much higher transfer rates over 1 gigabyte per second and IOPS over 1 million IO operations per second when compared to serial ARTA or SAS drives. For example, in 2011 OCZ and Marvell Co. developed a native PCI Express solid-state drive controller for a PCI Express 3.0 x 16 slot with maximum capacity of 12 terabytes and a performance of to 7.2 gigabytes per second sequential transfers and up to 2.52 million IOPS in random transfers. SATA Express is an interface for connecting SS by providing multiple PCI Express lanes as a pure PCI Express connection to the attached storage device. M.2 is a specification for internally mounted computer expansion cards and associated connectors, which also uses multiple PCI Express lanes. PCI Express storage devices can implement both a HCI logical interface for backward compatibility, and NVM Express logical interface for much faster I.O. operations provided by utilizing internal parallelism offered by such devices. Enterprise class SSDs can also implement SCSI over PCI Express. Topic: Cluster interconnect. Certain data center applications such as large computer clusters require the use of fiber optic interconnects due to the distance limitations inherent in copper cabling. Typically, a network-oriented standard such as Ethernet or fiber channel suffices for these applications, but in some cases the overhead introduced by routable protocols is undesirable and a lower level interconnect, such as InfiniBand, Rapidio, or Numalink is needed. Local bus standards such as PCIe and Hypertransport can in principle be used for this purpose, but as of 2015 solutions are only available from niche vendors such as Dolphin ICS. Topic. Competing protocols Other communications standards based on high bandwidth serial architectures include InfiniBand, Rapidio, Hypertransport, Intel QuickPath Interconnect, and the Mobile Industry Processor Interface MIPI. The differences are based on the trade-offs between flexibility and extensibility versus latency and overhead. 
For example, adding complex header information to a transmitted packet allows for complex routing. PCI Express is capable of this through an optional end-to-end -end TLP prefix feature. The additional overhead reduces the effective bandwidth of the interface and complicates bus discovery and initialization software. Also making the system hot pluggable requires that software track network topology changes. InfiniBand is such a technology. Another example is making the packets shorter to decrease latency, as is required if a bus must operate as a memory interface. Smaller packets mean packet headers consume a higher percentage of the packet, thus decreasing the effective bandwidth. Examples of bus protocols designed for this purpose are Rapidio and Hypertransport. PCI Express falls somewhere in the middle, targeted by design as a system interconnect local bus, rather than a device interconnect or routed network protocol. Additionally, its design goal of software transparency constrains the protocol and raises its latency somewhat. Delays in PCIe 4.0 implementations led to the Gen Z consortium, the CCIX effort and an open coherent accelerator processor interface CAPI, all being announced by the end of 2016. Topic. See also equals equals notes